How would one pull the but you subconsciously wanted it routine without it being rapey slash creepy? What I'm planning is that I'm thinking of this in terms of its anime adaptation. Is a possession Sue or a black hole Sue worse to have in a surrogate shipping fanfic? What is the part of the brain that perceives cuteness? What of the scenes in my story has the character seeing something ridiculously cute? And he goes, oh, my insert part of brain. In my canon, blue and green hair happened to reinforce that as normal here. I thought about making some real life historical figures blue and green haired in this universe. Is that a bad idea? Okay. You guys know I'm kind of obsessed with a five-man band, but I don't like just calling the new guy Sixth Ranger. How is this for the span of ones? Kim Possible. <clears throat> the hero Kim. The Lancer Shigo might also be Team Mom. The big guy Ron. The smart guy Bonnie. I make her a good stagist in the story. The chick Monique. Team Pet Rufus. Um, uh, Ninja? Yori? Also, I don't know what to make Dixie Kong in a different story. Okay, I want Harley or Ivy in my Batman story. They are going to say something like, Arkham is worse than hell, and what they are going to do is worse than both. But I can't make it sound both badass and in character. If it helps, the reason for this is they're about to go mama bear on some poor guy. Oh, I'm scared just thinking about it. Anyone got a pet recondition for Kim and Shigo? How do you think a male to female transgender martial artist would feel about fighting her male self? I want to make a non-serious comic teetering between a slice of life and some crazy action nonsense with school uniforms. The five or four central characters are all mega neckos. What should I do? Work safe just to put it out there. Ahem. I have a character who's behind on his rent. What is a reasonable amount to be behind on one's rent? A range would be nice, please. My thoughts are hundred seven hundred dollars, but I've never rented to anyone. I have a work in progress neon Genesis Evangelion fanfic where I'm planning to have Masato be one hundred and ninety centimeters tall. Yeah, there's a good explanation for that that does not involve the lame hand wave, but that would be telling. Tongue. Anyway, the question that is currently stumping me is, is it possible for Masato to have fun bag airbag happen between her and a 145 centimeter tall ray while both are standing? No, I really wish there was an easy to use character slash human body modeling program around. It would have saved me a lot of trouble on imagining how certain physical proportions would look like. I want to do a rocket shipping story where James comes out as a male to female transgender, but I can't think of a name to give her. Got ideas? I have a quitty wired question. How tall is a standard poodle, the largest breed, when standing on its hind legs, measured to the top of its head? I also wonder how old would a boy of that height be? How could I dress a succubus so that it shows what she is without being overly stripperific? Do you guys feel it would be army for human combat-oriented cyborgs to have tails? I feel that they'd be useful. They'd pretty much be a fifth limb where extra weapons can be stored or whatnot. But for some reason, it looks a little silly to me. What sort of jobs could a man-sized monster crow do? We'd be used to work at a smoothie shop before this problem. But I don't think a lot of people want their smoothies handled in his feet. Oh. And is there anything like a color dictionary? Sometimes I watch the sky and it looks so beautiful, but I don't know how to describe it because I don't know what color they are supposed to be. Hi, I'm Sears from a Space Colony. I never had edible protein roll except the so far the rest of it. <laughs>